It can really go either way. I'm doing my skincare routine at like seven or I'm doing it at 10.45 and I should have been asleep 45 minutes ago. Like there is no in between. Tonight, it's 10.45. I'm still drinking my nighttime cocktail. It has no alcohol in it. It's inositol, glycine, magnesium. Oh, and I also put a little bit of electrolytes in there. I just love taking this at night as well. That's my little nighttime little supplement sitch. Let's try retinoids, shall we? So we've got tretinoin, we've got retinaldehyde, and I don't have a retinol because retinols are just absolute trash, in my opinion. Let's just talk about the difference in the three. Okay, I had to move. My husband is sleeping, trying to sleep, and I don't wanna wake him up because he has to wake up at like 4.45 every morning for work. So I figure, you know, I'll let the guy sleep because I'm just like kicking it into my next gear. It's like, if I'm not going to bed at 10, I basically need to go to bed at one because I'd start to get really hyped up. And it's like, well now I'm like kind of in the, in the zone. So I might as well just chat about skincare, which I love to talk about. Before we even get into it, why should you use retinoids? Because you need to boost your cellular turnover. That means how quickly your new cells are coming to the surface of the skin. New cells coming to the surface of the skin means pretty skin. Think baby skin. A baby's skin is going to turn over once every, I think, 14 days. Like their skin is just angelic, soft, precious. Our skin or adult skin, as we get older, the cellular turnover starts to slow down. So what makes our skin look dull is seeing the dead skin on the surface of the skin and the old cells on the surface of the skin, that's just not gonna give a good look. So what we can do about that is, is boost our cellular turnover so our skin looks more youthful, which is what retinoids do. I do wanna answer a question that we get frequently about retinoids during pregnancy. And it's like, well, if they're not safe during pregnancy, like why would they be safe any other time? So here's the thing. All of these studies about retinoid usage during pregnancy were done on isotretinoin, which is also known as Accutane. Accutane is taken orally. Topical retinoids that you're putting on your skin are topically applied. The systemic absorption pretty much bleh. So technically you could use your retinoid during pregnancy. Now I'm not saying to do that by any means, okay? I'm not looking for any lawsuits right now, but what I'm saying is is that it's a CYA. Just skip them during pregnancy. There's no reason to even deal with that. But that is what these studies are about. It's not about this topical products, the topical retinoid that we use. So there is a risk with isotretinoin for birth defects. And the dose of isotretinoin accutane, it's so different from a retinoid. It's like comparing apples and sweet potatoes. I mean, it's not even apples and oranges. So that's that. So we know we need to use a retinoid. We know that during pregnancy, let's just skip them, okay? Let's not stress out about it. I always just say, hey, you know what? Keep using them until you find out you're pregnant. Or if you're really stressed out, just stop using them while you're trying to get pregnant. It's not something to overthink. There's other things that we can do to help cellular turnover. That's why we have Overachiever, but retinoids are still the most well-researched and they're the most effective. So you want them in your corner if you can use them. Okay, so that's that. Nursing is a different story because you're not worrying about the developing fetus anymore because the baby's out. As long as you're not applying your retinoid, like if you're breastfeeding like around that area, I think you're totally fine to use retinoids while nursing. And I'll share a little thing here with the drug and database for lactation, the systemic absorption is basically, again, none. So it's not going to be secreted in the breast milk. Those are just your basic CYAs. Retinol is the most well-known retinoid. It's also the cheapest. It's also arrives dead on arrival is what we call it a lot of times. So use whatever products that you like the way your skin looks that you, whatever. I'm not trying to be like, use my products or anything. I have a skincare line, but I want people to be using products consistently. Now, if you find a product that you like for your skin, keep using it. And if that's a retinol and you notice changes in your skin, great. I think that the best retinoid for you your skin is the one that you can use consistently. It doesn't have to be the strongest one. It can be the weakest one. It's the one that you can use every single night. So this is why I love retinaldehyde. As you can see, I love retinaldehyde. I'm almost done with this. Let's talk about the three mains. Retinol, retinaldehyde, tretinoin. Retinol is the most well-known. You see it everywhere. It's just because it's so cheap. And so people use it a lot. It's unstable. It's hard to formulate with. They've even done studies where they've tested certain ones. Sure, it's like in the product, but by the time it made it out of the formulation, it's not even there and enough to even see changes in the skin. Another thing about retinol is the conversions it has to go through to become active on the skin. What that means is when you put tretinoin, this is tretinoin 0.1 on the skin, it starts working right when you put it on the skin. That means it can be like 
a slap to the face, right? So the reason why a lot of people don't tolerate prescription tretinoin very well is because it's like, whoa, starts working right away and it comes in and it comes in hot. Like it's coming in strong. And so all of a sudden you're like, my skin is inflamed, it's irritated, it's dry, etc. That is why the first day you're like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. The second day you're like, okay, I'm okay. The third day you use it, you're like, mm, my skin feels a little bit sensitive and then it progresses. And so you don't really typically notice until maybe the third or fifth usage that your skin's reacting to. It. And some reactions are anticipated and some are adverse. I know for a fact, like tretinoin 0.1% is going to cause a reaction in like probably 85% of people because it's strong, it comes in hot. So a lot of people don't want to use it. Retinaldehyde is right in between. So we've got the retinol, the tretinoin, and we've got the retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde does not start working immediately when you put it on your skin, but it goes through one conversion to become its active state. Because it doesn't have to go through multiple conversions on the skin like retinol, it is more potent. And you want a more potent retinoid, but the perk of retinaldehyde is not only it's more potent, retinaldehyde is an estimated 20 times more potent than all retinols and working 11 times faster, but it's better tolerated. That means less side effects, less sensitivity, less dryness. It's a better form of retinol and it's a stronger, more effective form. So that's why to me in my mind, it's like I have tried to use retinol and my skin cannot tolerate it, but I can use retinaldehyde every single night and it's a stronger version. My skin can tolerate it better because the formulation and because of the ingredient retinaldehyde. They call it retinol's like gentle cousin. The reason why I love retinaldehyde and especially our retinaldehyde is because it's in a time release encapsulated formulation. And why should you care about that? So like I mentioned with tretinoin, it's coming in hot, working right away. It's like, boom, I'm here. Not the case. This is a little bit more loving, a little bit more like, hey, I'm gonna take you on a couple days. It's not just like, hey, let's rock and roll. It's gonna work over a period of several hours and that allows it to still work really, really effectively, but also it's a lot more gentle because your skin's not having to deal with this like massive hit all at one time. This works over the period of the entire night. And we also boosted this formulation with Bacuchiol, which retinoids and Bacuchiol pair really, really well together because not only does Bacuchiol improve the tolerability of your retinoid, meaning it makes your skin able to tolerate it better. It also allows it to work longer and more effectively on the skin. So not only are retinaldehyde in a time release formulation, but it's also boosted with Bacuchiol and other calming, soothing ingredients to really try to work against any type of dryness sensitivity that you may have when starting it. If you have never used a retinoid in your life, you might have some dryness and sensitivity. That's okay. Again, there's adverse reactions and there's anticipated reactions. And there is some anticipated dryness sensitivity initially, but it's nothing compared to this. There's nothing compared to the majority of retinols if it's actually like a higher percentage retinol. That's why I love retinaldehyde. It is superior in all retinols. So just forget about them. Again, it's going back to consistency. And what I found with practicing is that the reason people stop using retinoids is because they cannot tolerate them. And then ultimately, if you're not using them consistently, then you're not going to see results. And then you're going to just be like, <sighs> What's the point? And you want to see results in your skin because skincare is powerful, but it has to be used consistently. So that's that. What other questions do you have about retinoids? Any of them? Let's chat. 